Hi everyone, in this video we're going to derive another useful relationship between the Epsilon Levi Civita symbol and the Kronecker delta. Um, and I'm going to assume some familiarity with suffix notation and the summation convention. Um, if anyone would like to see some more basic videos on how those things work, just let me know and I can, I can do that. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some assumed knowledge in how those things work. Um, and here's the identity we're trying to prove. Epsilon ijk, epsilon klm is delta il delta jm minus delta im delta jl. Now, this is a very useful identity when we're proving um, relationships between uh, vectors, especially when the cross product is involved. So that's kind of the motivation for doing this. And our starting point is going to be um, to use a more general identity that I derived in my last video. Okay, and that was epsilon ijk times epsilon klm. And remember, I'm assuming the summation convention, so because k appears twice, we're summing over k. Um, and we showed that what this is equal to uh, is the determinant of a matrix, a matrix full of deltas, right? And um, in the top row, the deltas all have an index of i, like this. And then uh, the next row, they have an index of j. And in the last row, they have an index of k. All right. And um, then we can fill in uh, the columns. The first column, there is an index of k. So we can put k's there. And then l's in the second column, like that. And then finally m's in the third column. Okay, so I showed this in my last video. The only difference here is that these two indices are, are now the same. Okay, so let's just expand this determinant so we can start to make some progress on simplifying this. So if we just write down the determinant of this matrix, the first term is going to be delta ik, and then we're going to get um, delta jl uh, times delta km. And then we have to subtract off delta jm delta kl, right? Then we have to subtract off delta il times delta jk and delta km, uh, and then minus delta jm delta kk. And finally, our third term, we add on delta im times uh, delta jk, delta kl, and then subtract uh, delta jl, delta kk. All right, so that's the fully expanded form of this determinant. Um, now, we are going to expand all the brackets and start to look at the, well, simplify the terms individually. All right, so... This first term, if we look at our first set of brackets, the first term we get is delta ik, delta jl, delta km. Now, what we can do with this is, remember, we are summing over k, and uh, k is repeated in that expression. And so, basically, we only get a non-zero contribution when i equals k and k equals m, because that's how the Kronecker delta is defined. Um, and so, if i equals k and k equals m, then i also equals m, right? And so we can write that first term as delta jl uh, delta im. So we've changed it from three deltas to two deltas. And we can do a similar thing for, for all of these terms, actually. Now, the second term is going to be, we've got delta ik, delta jm, delta kl. But what's happening here um, is that we're forcing i to be equal to k, but also k to be equal to l. And therefore, i has to be equal to l. So we subtract off delta jm uh, delta i l. Okay. And then what's going to happen next? Well, next term is delta i l or minus delta i l uh, delta jk delta km. We're going to use the same argument, right? Uh, j is k. J has to be equal to K, but K has to be equal to M as well. Therefore, J has to be equal to M. And so we can write that more succinctly as just delta JM. Uh, the next term um, is kind of interesting. So we get a plus from these two minuses. And 
we've got um, delta il, delta jm, but then we've got this delta kk thing. Now, how can we simplify that? I think the clearest way to see that is just write out what this really means. Remember, we're summing over k, so what this really is is delta 1, 1 plus delta 2, 2 plus delta 3, 3. Now, these are all just 1, right? Because the chronic delta is defined so that if the two indices are the same, then it's just 1. So we get 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. And so we can just actually put a 3 in front of this factor there. Right, two more terms to expand. Next one, delta im, delta jk, delta kl. j has to be k, but k has to be l, therefore j has to be l. So delta im, delta jl. And then the last term, we have a delta kk again, right? So we get the same three, and then delta im, uh, delta jl. Okay, so now let's just collect the terms together. Uh, so we've got a JLIM term there, we have another one here, and uh, we have, um, no, that's not right, JLIM. So JLIM term there, um, we have another one there, and another one there. There we go. And then the other terms, these remaining three terms are also of the same kind. We've got JMIL, JMIL, and JMIL. Right, so... Let's collect the like terms together, the single underlined ones. We've got one of them, then two of them, uh, then minus three of them. So minus one of them in total, right? So we've got minus delta im delta jl. And the double underlined terms, well, we've got three of them, and then minus one of them and minus one of them again. So just one of them in total. So that simplifies to just delta il uh, delta jm, which is exactly what we were trying to prove, right, so as required. So there you are, that's how we can use this more general identity in terms of uh, determinant to show this uh, contracted identity where we sum over uh, this k-index.